All right, guys. Disclaimer again. Um, racism, sexism, um, ages, ageism, I believe, has passed already, so, uh, all right, coffee time. Um, the problem with the Bennett Craig Bloom projection is that they are modeled on the idea that future rates will resemble a variety of past rates, but our present is different from our past. We have gone through a major social discombobulation. Women are going to college and are going to work at rates never seen before. Some, not many, feel they don't want to marry. Men are facing women with different attitudes and different statuses. It is said that men are intimidated by marrying such educated and upwardly mobile career woman. It is said that more permissive sexual attitudes have made it easier for men not to worry or to marry such later in life. So why should we think future marriage patterns will resemble the past ones? In the old days it's true that a large proportion of women were married by age 30 or 35. Under the social standards of the time, those few who weren't married weren't ever likely to. But to compare the data of those few unmarried women of yesterday with today's many unmarried women in a new circumstance, in the new social circumstance is probably invalid. Uh, marriage delayed will not be necessarily proved to be marriage denied. Whoa. All we know so far is that many women of the baby boom cohort have not married yet. We don't know the future yet. My skepticism of the BCB projection is based on more on humanity than on statistics. At a certain point in time, the baby boom um, now young old adult generation will have to make a choice. At that time, for both women and men, it will not be the choice about getting married and having a family now or later. It will become a choice that will more properly be phrased as getting married and having a family now or never. Saying never means for most intents and purposes that a young person's that a young person must say Quote, I have decided to never have a husband or a wife or a child, a family, grandchildren, or a posterity. That is a cosmic choice. There are many millions of years of genetics working against it. There are bedrock human emotions working against it. Factors even more potent than the current lure of the f fast track career. There are many studies showing that People who marry are generally happier and wealthier than those who don't. So I say that while marriage rates will decline, the decline won't be nearly as dramatic as the impressions left by the Bennett Craig Bloom study. Most of the young women and men in question will decide to marry, although at later ages than we've normally seen. Eligible mates now sensed to be in short supply will materialize just as most women don't want to be spinsters most men don't want to remain bachelors forever playing the field if indeed men are now intimidated by upscale women maybe they will soon realize that in a two earner world a high earner woman can be quite a catch a few months after the unpublished bcb study appeared Another unpublished study surfaced. This one was by Jeanne Mormon, a U.S. Census Bureau demographer. Miss Mormon reported. Oh, Miss Mormon report used a statistical model based on different set of prior rates to project future marriage rates for white collar educate college, white college educated woman. The Mormon study had the effect of factoring in the idea that marriage was only being delayed, not abandoned, and her projections were, accordingly, sharply different. For example, where BCB said only 5% never married woman age 35 would 
ever marry. Mormon said 40% would marry. So this really reminds me of the rhetoric of uh, the leftists and liberals who talk about abortion rights. And now people like uh, Andrew Yang and like Jordan Peterson are like, oh, can't we bring it back to a time when family values? It's like, this isn't like something they're going out of their way to be like an activist against family values. This is totally separate in their minds, you know, but men just, since it's about procreating with them, you know, so seriously, like people have priorities and they put stuff off all the time. I don't see why it takes us study to be like, actually, people are just taking their time. It's like, oh, no shit. Okay. A few months after the unpublished BCB study, uh, oh, my own, uh, my own surmise is that the truth will turn out to be somewhere between the two studies, but much closer to Mormon. There will be somewhat less marriage for all women, not just college-educated whites, but probably not as dra drastically low as the BCB data suggested. Some rates are discussed in Chapter 11. As the news of Mormon's findings spread, there will be collective high of relief among unmarried women. Although, this report never did receive the attention accorded, accorded, uh, the attention accorded the BBC study. The battle of the studies, it seems to me, was highly instructive on at least two counts. First, the initial public panic, it revealed more clearly than any set of data could that most women, even college-educated career women, want very much to get married, often desperately so. When they are not married and believe they won't ever be married, they are often miserable. Okay. Unfortunately, sociological research can take a life of its own, often in harmful ways. Uh, a December 29, 1986 article in the New York Times entitled When Studies Mislead by, by Andre Brooks began this way. A 36-year-old patient recently told Dr. Joanne Magdoff, a Manhattan psycho psychotherapist, that she had decided to marry a man she did not love after reading a study that suggested a college-educated woman who was single at age 30 had only 20% of marrying. Another patient, a 45-year-old man, admitted bullying his wife into doing his bidding, using the same study to convince the wife that she would have no chance of finding anyone if he became if he became dissatisfied and left. Yikes. Second was this. Although the two studies referred in results, they had powerful lowest common denominators. BCB says a lot of women will not get married. Mormon says that more women than BCB indicates will get married, only much later in life. Their projection then agrees at least on this. Marriage is being and will be delayed. If you buy the BCB idea of less marriage, it obviously uh, subsumes the idea of later marriage. <sighs> Agreed. Later marriage. With that, we apparently get m much personal attention, if not unhappiness. But what else does later marriage mean? Something quite relevant to the thesis of this book. Um, a woman marrying after 30, certainly after a 35 is less likely to have a large family and more likely to have either one child or perhaps none. Princeton demographer Charles Wethoff, Westhoff es estimates that about half of young American women today will end their fertile years with either no children or only one child. If that indeed proves to be the case in the future, such a combined rate of ones and nuns would be the lowest in the American history. This situation of later marriage, of course, uh, exacerbates the birth dearth. In my judgment, it can be hurt 
individuals enormously. Oh. Yeah, so... I can see a conservative argument for why this is fucked up, actually. Why should I have kids? Because other people are gonna get hurt. Um, seriously. But this is more like, you're not actually harming anyone and judging someone else's life, but at the same time, I can see a conservative making this argument even though they're the ones for family values, but they wouldn't, I bet you they wouldn't have children if, um, if, um, they were told, you, you only need kids because it benefits the rest of society, like, how many uh, conservatives would just not have kids? Alright, um, oh, okay, um, if that indeed proves to be the case in the future, uh, ones and nuns will be the lowest in American history, the situation of their... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's an old demographic maxim. Fertility delayed is fertility denied, and later marriage delays fertility. Why? For several reasons, some of which will be discussed at later length in Chapter 10. The obvious one is that most women, Judy Kramer notwithstanding, don't have babies until and unless they have husbands. Moreover, it is more difficult for older women to conceive. One study of French origin indicates that 28% of women are infertile after age 35 and, age, and after age 40, fully 63% cannot conceive. These data have been sharply challenged at the French study was based on women who had been involved in attempts at artificial insemination. Other studies, probably more accurate, show much lower rates of infertility as women ages. Data from the National Center for Health Statistics show that over 40 infertile rate is 27% based on recent uh, national health statistics studies. Quite a different from Quite a difference from the French study's reported rate of 63%, with all studies agree that fertility does decline at age, as age rises. The national, the NCHS data shows 2% of married couples wanting children, first or more, were infertile in their teens, about 10% infertile in their 20s, and 14% at age 30 to 35. The big jump in the demographic distribution of infertility in women occurs among couples at ages 35 to 39, when the rate rises to 25%. At age 40 to 44, it is 27%. Another view of these sorts of rates is to be found on page 125. The moral of the story is this. If you want to have children, your chances of, are, of success are more greater if you try before age 35. And of course, there is a biological clock itself. The median age of menopause is in the late 40s. The later a woman marries, the narrower is her window of fertility. The likelihood of a woman marrying in her late 30s or early 40s and having two children is not large of having three children very rare. Other factors narrowing the likelihood of two or more children child family for women who marry late in, in, include the higher probability of their being deeply involved in a career. Further, there seems to be a somewhat greater possibility of having concentrated a fertility impairing disease. Oh, contracted a fertility impairing disease. Although the large majority of women who have contracted such a disease remain infertile, and much rem remarkable medical progress has been achieved in fertility enhancement for those who have infertility problems, as will be discussed later. In recent years, the fertility rates of American women who have just completed their fertility years show that only 9.5% never bore children. Today, the experts are trying to gauge what will happen when the cur uh, current cohort of young women uh, complete their fertility years. The very lowest estimates are that about 15% of women, of American women, will have 
to bear no children. The highest estimates are about 25%. Uh, consensus among demographers seems to be about 25 or 22%. Now, in the beginning of the book, it was talking about how uh, the age pattern and the demographic shift has never happened before, and it's talking about menopause and you know the the grandmother hypothesis suggests that there are multiple species suggested for menopause that is a um uh, a kin selection attempt to expand your population because people are more than just birthing objects and so based on the grandmother hypothesis if you are a menopausal type of species and you're still able to be useful and meaningful you know in a social species of course then there is no need to actually base womanhood on having children now i know there's a lot of people who probably won't like me using a naturalistic fallacy but since humans are one of the ones that do the menopause like uh whales i believe and other creatures like that you know I think nature brings more value to the table in a certain way more than these structured systems trying to just coerce women into having kids. Alright, that's the end of my rant for that.